invite you and yours to join us and ours for the next 30 minutes on the Red Green Show. You know, time is money, and this is only half an hour, but it seems a lot longer, you know? So it's really a bargain. And I love doing this show, but I couldn't do it without my uncle. And, well, because he's the head honcho around here. Well, that is until, of course, he realizes that he's actually passed it, and that's the day that I get to take over. <laughs> but until that time, here's the head honcho, the, the big guy with the twinkle in his eye, and in the twilight of his career, the current host of the Red Green Show, Mr. Red Green! Thank you, Harold. Thank you. Welcome to Possum Lodge. That intro made me feel 20 years younger. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you feel 50 again. <laughs> you need me around here, because without me, you couldn't do this. And if I could, I wouldn't, Harold. <laughs> something going on with uh, Bob Stuyvesant this week up at the lodge. He's real excited about something or other. Well, maybe it's his job. You know, he works for National Resources. Well, what could be exciting about that, Harold, other than the government pension? <laughs> well, maybe, just maybe he's, like, created some new oversized vegetable. No, Harold, but I think your parents may have. <laughs> Why are you being so cruel to me? What did I ever do to you? Well, that introduction comes to mind. <laughs> Fair enough. No, there's only two things that excite a man. Expensive toys and real expensive toys. <laughs> now, with Bob, uh, I'd say this toy has something to do with golf, since he happens to be a golfaholic maniac. You think, you think maybe, like, he bought, like, a golf course? Well, if he did, Harold, I'm going to go work for Natural Resources. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Too expensive, isn't it? Yeah. Well, maybe he bought a golf ball. <laughs> you know, one of those orange ones with the huge dimples on it? Could be like that. Or designer tees. Maybe he got designer tees. They make designer tees? They made designer tees. He probably got those. Or a megaphone. Maybe he got a megaphone, but then he could just yell four really loud. You're like, four! <laughs> so maybe he got, like, one of the, but, but yeah, okay. All right, how is he going to hold a megaphone and his clubs? Yeah. You know, like, you know what it could be? Like a customized hat-mounted mini megaphone and it automatically dispenses tees right into the ground. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> one of those. That's what he got. That's so great. <laughs> Harold, uh, maybe you should just go right into the next segment. You know, there's already too much violence on television. Yeah, okay. That's, that was good, Uncle Ridley. You, you picked up on that and you kept things moving and everything. That's good. You know, it shows you mellowed. Shut up, Harold. You slip back a little bit there, though. <laughs> You said a gloves came in today. I brought them over. Oh, that's great news, Murray. <laughs> this might be the set that helps me break par. Yeah. Or even break a hundred. <laughs> You've never broken a hundred? Well, not on nine consecutive holes, no. <laughs> okay, bring them in, Dwayne. Oh, great. All right, that'll be 200 uh, plus tax, and then there's shipping and handling, delivery charges from the store over to here. Let's just call that an even 400, huh? Mm, all right. <laughs> Will you take a check? Mm. Oh, here's a government check. I'm buying these for the Department of Natural Resources. Huh. I use them in work, you know, for uh, checking out nature and stuff. <laughs> Cash. Oh, fine. Well, I'm gonna need a receipt. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, wait, oh! <laughs> I love the smell of new clubs. <laughs> Smells like victory. Yeah, all right, look, your receipt is in the pocket with the all teas, right. okay? Happy hacking. All Let's right. go, Dwayne. <laughs> Thanks, Murray. Yeah. Wait a minute. Well, they, these are all woods. So? Well, where are the irons? Well, who needs irons? Oh, trust me, these clubs are going to bring your score right down. Well, I can't, I can't golf with all drivers. Have you ever tried golfing with just drivers? No. Huh? Well, have you ever played a good game of golf? No. Well, then what do you know? Huh? Come on, just try them out one round, huh? Well, look, they're, they're, all, they're all drivers. I mean, there's no irons. Look, there's not even a putter. Oh, there's a putter in here. Oh, uh, Dwayne, you left the putter in the back of the truck. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Get yourself another set of golf clubs, did you, Bob? Yeah. Murray's selling me these uh, miracle clubs. <laughs> they're supposed to reduce my score by half, or even to par. <laughs> oh, that with a money-back guarantee. <laughs> Oh, really? You're actually guaranteeing something you sell, Murray? Well, why not? You know, if it doesn't work out, I'll take him back. If it does, I've unloaded a set of left-handed clubs. <laughs> what? <laughs> lefts? Well, these are all lefts! I golf right-handed, Murray! Well, just try it once. <laughs> well, I can't golf backwards! 
How can I do this and expect a half-decent score? Have you ever golfed backwards? No. Have you ever had a half-decent score? No. <laughs> All right. Guess I'll try them. Try just about everything else. That's <laughs> right. Possibly go wrong, I guess, huh? That's right. So, so what? So, yeah, you, so you take 200 strokes in nine holes, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, at least it's a step in the right direction. <laughs> All right, I'll give them a try. Good. <laughs> when no one else is around. I don't know. Might be just crazy enough to do the trick. Here's the putter. Uh, oh. oh, boy. <laughs> Say on the river a long time ago, the paddle wheelers would come steaming to and fro. <laughs> they'd wave and they'd whistle as they headed for the locks. Then they'd plow over a bunch of swimmers and wipe out all the docks. <laughs> they'd leave arms and legs and deck chairs in their wake. With that much polluting, no wonder they're banned from the lake. <laughs> A long time ago, and the rivers and the wind and the paddle wheelers and come. <laughs> this week in the handyman corner, we're going to show you how you can make your own uh, cheap transportation. You know what? With the price of cars getting up there, where it's uh, I believe well over five hundred dollars now, and uh, even a motorcycle is going to cost you ninety. Okay? So I say. Why not do what the handyman does? <clears throat> Build yourself a moped. <laughs> I picked up this bike for about five bucks now at the police auction. But if that's too much for you, you can get one for free over at the public schools uh, during nap time, or as they call it, history class. <laughs> <clears throat> All you need is uh, some extra chain, a couple of rolls of the handyman's secret weapon duct tape, and something to use as a motor. You could use a chainsaw, but you could use an outboard motor, or uh, if you don't care about going real slow, you could use one of them garage door openers. Okay, now, first step is you gotta get the pedals and the chain, oh boy, off the bike. Okay, now, there's a, there's a trick to this. Yeah, I don't think that's the trick. <laughs> all righty, all righty. You know, there might uh, maybe some kind of a wrench or something to use on these. No. 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 Oh, yeah, 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 Don't try uh, sawing that off with a hacksaw. You'll just ruin a perfectly good hacksaw blade. <laughs> so Harold had the right wrench in his uh, bike kit. <laughs> okay, so top that off. Save these pedals, though, because uh, next week we're going to show you how to make a foot-powered egg slicer. <laughs> All right, uh, next up is to get the chain off the saw. <clears throat> now, uh, you'll find there's... Uh, there's one uh, special link on the chain that just comes apart, and you can, you can pry that open, or you can uh, cut it off with snips, or uh, if you have a heavy vehicle at all, just back right over the darn thing. <laughs> okay, now I'm ready to uh, mount the engine right onto the bike. Now, I was going to bolt this uh, onto the frame of the bike, but... Uh, 
I'm not sure how that would work, and I, at this point, have no idea what I was thinking of. So I think what I'll do is I'll use a few C-clamps and uh, a little bit more of the handyman secret weapon duct tape. And when you put it on, make sure you snug her up real good. You don't want this thing whipping off between your legs 50 miles an hour. Or maybe you do, you know. <laughs> duct tape is uh, great stuff, isn't it? You can build a house with this stuff. Just make sure you smooth her down good. Nothing says poor craftsman like lumpy tape. <laughs> another, another word of caution is you, you want to put a little bit of slack in the chain, but not too much, because you don't want that chain flopping around, whapping into whatever you got flopping around. <laughs> okay, it's a real eye catcher, isn't it? Imagine driving through the park in this. They're going to see you. Now well, let's give her a go. <laughs> there you have it. Nothing to it. Nothing. I got nothing. I forgot to tell you to be sitting on the bike when you started. Anyway, remember, till next time, the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> oh my golly, the Texas Moped Massacre. <laughs>
anyway, he's uh, going to have one engine instead of two, I guess. And what you do is almost like a diaper thing. You step into the rig, and uh, it's basically a portable fishing boat kind of... Oh, no. Uh, well, oh... Boy, you don't want to be a fish looking up at that point. Do you? Okay, well... Well, we know where we're going with this, don't we? Yeah. And he lost his tube. And it's called a float tube. That's why I say that he lost it. Now it's going to this time win from the ladder, maybe a little bit lower, and get the one foot in there, and then try to get the other try to get the other foot in there, too. No, that's only one. Bill, that's just one. No, no, no. It's amazing you still want to go fishing after him. Now he's going to just put it on on the dock and then just jump in with the flipper and hook into between the boards. He didn't notice that. I tried to point it out to him, but he just, well... <laughs> You know, you pay for not listening. Anyway, he, he finally got into it there, and then he wanted some help because he had to... And then I, you know, the, something handy around the dock, like a boat hook, is such a handy thing. You never know what you're going to use it for. Now, what I want to do is to hand them all, because there's compartments in the float tube. You can uh, you put your tackle box in there and your uh, thermos and a uh, flashlight, because you don't know how long he's going to be out there. And the bait I just kind of threw in there. I thought that <laughs> might keep him awake, you know and uh, the fishing rod, and he's ready to rip. There's a little uh, apron on the front, goes right up, keep everything dry, and even with, uh, with the one flipper, he could uh, get out to where he wanted to fish, and uh, he'd look up there. So I thought I'd just take the boat out and uh, kind of go, go out and join him, you know, and uh, it looked like kind of fun. And, uh, plus, I had brought my fishing rod, as I said. And, uh, if he caught a, what do you do with a real big one, anyway? He wanted me to you know, come on over, but you know, by golly, when you get the uh, you get the 9.9 open up there, it kind of raises the, the bow to a certain extent. And she wasn't running real good. She was seemed to me she was running rich, and I'm trying to adjust the mixture on that because if you're running rich, you're going to burn a lot of gas and uh, it hurts. <laughs> and you know, oh, the thing was, I never did, I never did see Bill. Um, I went way up the lake. I hope he's okay. <laughs> Mr. Hatfield and I went down to the store to ask Murray about the stolen clubs. Of course, Murray denied everything before we'd even asked. Dwayne nodded a lot, and then he sold uh, Buster a fishing hat that he'd made out of a guitar. <laughs> Buster has trouble finding hats, but that small, round head of his uh, fit perfectly into the sound hole. He had the neck kind of going straight out here and three strings under each ear. He looked like somebody who'd stood too close to the stage during a Pete Townsend guitar solo. <laughs> and on, the, on the way back to the lodge, he was, he was doing bar chords with his comb, and then he got caught in a crosswind that produced about the loudest E minor seventh I've ever heard. <laughs> Hello, Uncle Red. Excuse me, but this has very little or nothing actually to do with Bob's midlife crisis and his golf clubs. I think your mind's kind of wandering there. Well, my mind may wander, Harold, but at least it gets out once in a while. <laughs> okay, so uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, the tuning pegs kind of shot up uh, Buster's nose there. Oh, sorry. See, my little possum. <laughs> it's meeting time. Come on, Uncle Red, let's get downstairs and see what's going on. Yeah, okay, well, uh, I'll just uh, head down to the lodge meeting here, and we're going to try and find a new hobby for Bob. I wonder if he'd like Harold's job. <laughs> Excuse me a minute. <laughs> the floor recognizes Noel Christmas. Thank you, Red. <clears throat> Red, I've got proof that Bob's new clubs are hot. Oh, oh, oh well, I know. I'm sorry, Bob. I, I, I couldn't have known. Uh, but remember, caveat emptor. <laughs> oh, I don't care. Well, Bob, I'm going to have to impound those as evidence and take them down to the station. Sorry. Right there. Yeah. I want my money back, though, Murray. Oh, sorry, no can do, Bob. The goods have been confiscated, you see. One more point. Bob, Murray, Dwayne, you're all under arrest for dealing in stolen goods. 
What? Oh! Wait, wait. Are, are you accusing us of knowingly dealing with stolen goods? No, no, wait a minute. I didn't even know that they were stolen. Yeah, he wasn't even there when the guy who swiped him came to the store. Well, I mean, we don't know anything. We don't know anything. <laughs> All right, Bob. You can go free. Go on. Murray Duane, you're under arrest. <laughs> we didn't know they were stolen. Now, this guy just came into the store. He said he was going to become a missionary and work in Africa, and he wanted to sell off his collection of left-handed clubs to finance his missionary work well, and buy a new hat. He went to Africa. Yeah, he got a missionary position. <laughs> you got any proof? Huh? I mean, can anybody here corroborate this story? Well, I, I think a refund might refresh my memory, Marie. Oh, huh. well, uh, how about a half a refund and uh, a game of golf with a divot train here? <laughs> oh, no, I was there. It's all true. This guy was uh, going to Africa to uh, convert uh, heathens and stuff like that. And, uh, and Murray bought his clubs uh, just to help him out. <laughs> That's your story? Well, it is at this point, yeah. <laughs> I'll be watching you. I will be watching you. <laughs> oh. business <laughs> and I uh, call on Bob here to give us some evenings entertainment I've got a new kind of a new lease on life here now Bob That's yes. here, Bob. Well, thank you very much Red <laughs> well I I guess I'm a man with a, a purpose again <laughs> you know I, I realized that it was those clubs I mean anyone could get a six under par score with those clubs well, I think everybody learned a little something tonight, and, and the beauty of it is it'll be totally lost on them by tomorrow morning. I'll go back to being Bob, Marie will go back to being Marie, Harold will go back to being Harold, but I'll fix them. I'll go back to being me. Anyway, if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting tonight, and uh, Buster Hadfield is going to serenade us outside the bedroom window with his hat. So be sure and have a few potted plants ready. So, until next time, on behalf of myself uh, and Harold, and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge. Keep your stick on the ice. Right at the first hole, I stepped up to the tee. First tee. I decided to hit this ball, and I, I just felt that right at that moment, huh, that this was not going to be a regular golf game. So when I hit the ball down there, I, and I, I could feel that, that the energy coming from the ball going right up to my club. So I, but I pulled back. It's not like I was even playing golf at all. It was more like I was, oh, I don't know, uh, flying or something. It just seems like much, much more natural to me. But anyway, that ball that just took off and it arched perfectly. Just perpendicular to my body. Art, right. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha